Worm tea and human pee. Should either be going in your worm bin? We'll cover that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. Okay, a couple of fun topics today. I've got a YouTube subscriber who says that her worm farm is heating up, and she wonders if it's a good idea to add aerated worm tea to help cool it off. Now, I wouldn't do this for two reasons. Unless the worm bin is sitting in direct sunlight, then it's heating up due to microbes. Adding a tea with billions of more microbes is not going to help that. Now, the microbes in that tea are likely not the heat-producing thermophilic microbes, but I wouldn't add them regardless. The second reason is that water is a heat conductor, and it's a stimulant for microbes too. So you might get an initial cooldown, but that's not going to last very long. You might end up with an even warmer worm farm than before. In fact, when we were doing our own composting here, when our aerated static pile composter temperatures started falling before we expected them to, it was almost always because the pile got too dry, so we actually added water to light the pile back up again. If your bin is heating up, and again, if it's not due to something like direct sunlight, then it's because your mix of food and bedding is around that 25 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio where hot composting can actually take place. I would add more carbon-rich bedding like paper, cardboard, wood chips, peat moss, coconut core, stuff like that with your feedings. And I'd suggest doing this in about a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one ratio. That's bedding to food waste, and that's by volume. Okay, we're gonna talk about pee in a worm bin next, but real fast, if you're new to vermicomposting, I wanna send you the Worm Farm Startup Guide, which is a cool little PDF that's gonna help you start up a worm farm, like this one right here, and it's gonna help you recycle your food scraps and other things that you wanna uh, turn into soil. And you might just find a nice little discount code in the guide that you can use to get your urban worm bag, worms, worm castings, or other products a little bit more cheaply. Just click this little link above my left shoulder. It's going to take you down to the video description where you'll click a little link where you can sign up to get that guide right now. You can also check the top link in the video description to get that guide too. Okay, I've got another question here, and it's an interesting one. It came from YouTube. And, you know, I love YouTube, and I get the best questions on there. Anyway, somebody asked if I could do an episode on human urine in a compost pile or a worm farm. And I presume the point of doing that would be to add nitrogen, which would be in the form of urea, uh, to the mix. Now, I get questions from time to time from people who ask if it's a good idea to put all sorts of strange wastes into a worm bin. These things range from dryer lint to hair and fingernails to RP. In most cases, my public answer that I would say to you guys is that these things are generally not good or bad in small quantities. And if you got massive amounts of fingernails, then I've got other questions for you. But inside, I kind of wonder why someone would want to get so creative when we have plenty of more normal waste, like food waste and paper waste that could go in the bin. Most of us aren't actually composting everything that we're making uh, in our home. So urine's a little bit different, though, than those other strange wastes because it does contain a decent amount of nitrogen in the form of urea, which can interact with carbon and promote decomposition, I suppose. But the problem with urine in a worm farm is the salt content and the relatively small size of worm farms compared to compost piles. Worms are very sensitive to salt, so I think that putting urine directly into a worm farm isn't going to be that helpful. And if you're going to pee cycle, get it? Your urine, I'd rather see you do this in a compost pile, which is much larger, isn't dependent on worms to do the decomposition, and will tend to lack in nitrogen anyway, since most home compost piles don't have enough nitrogen-rich food waste to get that carbon to nitrogen ratio down to 25 to 1, where true hot composting can take place. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please do that now. Maybe leave your own question so I can get to it on a future episode. We'll see you then.